You ever met anyone who's so cool, suave, and drippy that when they walk, they kind of lean to the left a little bit? Well, your plane is that cool, and it likes to lean to the left. Here are the four left-turning tendencies you need to be aware of. Let go! Boom! Whenever you dip in that thing and swinging and banging, it's always going to have a tendency to want to lean to the left. And there are reasons for that. And we're about to go over the four left-turning tendencies that you need to be aware of right now. Let, let go! The first left-turning tendency you want to be aware of is called spiraling slipstream. And when you think about this one, this is very easy when you think about what's happening in the moment here. Spiraling slipstream. So this thing, you're in your cockpit, you're chilling in your nice plane, and you're looking at the propeller spin. It's spinning in a clockwise kind of motion from your view from inside the aircraft. When you look at that, think about this and ask yourself this question. Where do you think all that air is going that's coming from the propeller? Well, it's spiraling around the aircraft and then hitting the left tail, slightly turning the aircraft to the left. That's why this left turning tendency is called spiraling slipstream. So every time that propeller is spinning, that air is just being redistributed, spiraling around the aircraft, and then slightly touching that tail, giving it that left turning tendency there. So you always going to be aware of that, and that's going to be one of the ones why you got to give it a little bit more of that right rudder if you're coming down the runway and you're thinking about this. Every time it's going to want to lean back and lean back to the left, and you got to make sure you correct that by keeping things straight by giving it that nice right rudder. Left turning tendency number one, spiraling slipstream. For our second left turning tendency, it's called torque effect. And for this one, we're going to reference our boy Newton again. You see, Newton keeps popping up. He popped up when we were talking about the theories of lift, and now he's coming back again when we talk about left turning tendencies. You know, he was down with the principle of for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction that's going to happen. So this is, applies here when you talk about the torque effect and start thinking about when you ever dip in that thing on the runway, as soon as you get on the runway, you get ready to take off and you give it that full power immediately. It almost wants to start turning to the left. Why is that? It's because the propeller, of course, is spinning. It's spinning to that right in that clockwise motion. And then, of course, the opposite reaction to that action would be leaning to the left. And that's exactly what you're getting, that Newton in effect once again, and you gotta give it that right rudder to help keep it straight. That's all this simply is. It gives you that yawing to the left while you're on the ground, and you gotta give it a little bit of that right rudder to keep it straight. That's the torque effect. That can not only affect you when you're on the ground, it also can impact you when you're in the air. If you're in the air cruising at a nice RPMs, and then you decide to give it full power again, it can start rolling a little bit, ever so slightly, to the left and you got to give it a nice that right rudder keep that ball in the center and keep that thing turning the whole purpose of this is you want to make sure everything is coordinated at all times on the plane you want to have the nose and the tail in line you don't want to be leaning anyone any one way or coming out uncoordinated and a lot of this is just adding that right rudder when you're experiencing these left turning tendencies and number two numero dos is the torque effect numero tres now we're at the midway point of our left turning sentences. And number three is called P factor. An easy way to remember this is that P stands, of course, for propeller, but you can also think about it in, in sense of pitch factor because it's involving not only the pitch, but also the propeller at the same time. So just think about this, check it. Boom, you flying that thing, rolling through the air. The relative wind is always coming from what? The opposite, the flight path. So you're flowing this way, relative wind is coming like this. Everything's nice and cool, everything's good. You're hitting that propeller, and remember, your propeller is acting almost just like the wing of a plane. If you ever take a close look at your propeller, it looks just like the wing of the airplane. The curvature, everything that it has on it, is creating that low pressure system where it's getting sucked through the air in addition to cutting and biting through the air to help thrust and give us that thrust that we need to counteract that drag. So it's all working just like a wing and it's responding to that relative wind. We're all, that's all nice and cool when you're all straight and level, baby. But when you start, again, P factor, propeller, and pitch, when you pitch up, that relative wind is now hitting it at a unique kind of angle. And just think about how the propeller is spinning. One of those, those propellers side of it, the right side is biting into a little bit more air than the left side, just because you're pitched a certain sort of way. They're not biting into the air nice and evenly and equally. And that will cause 
that left turning tendency. Just the simple fact that the biting of the propeller into the air and the way it's touching that relative wind based on the pitch angle and based on everything that you are have a tendency to make you want to turn to the left and you have to give it that right rudder to keep it straight. So always think about P factor anytime you're getting ready to pitch the airplane up and what it may have a tendency to do. So to make sure you can keep everything straight and level and keep that nose in line with the tail. Yeah. And the last left turning tendency is called gyroscopic precession. This is a very unique one and you can feel this in certain aircraft way more than others. We'll get to that. First, just understanding what gyroscopic precession is. Of course, think about your propeller. It has those gyro kind of characteristics and tendencies. And gyroscopic precession, all it's really saying is the fact that whenever a force is applied in one direction, it's not felt until 90 degrees later in the other direction. So that's kind of giving you an idea of if you're in the aircraft right here, you're sitting in that thing looking at that, that view from the cockpit and all of a sudden you were trying to lean forward a little bit, it wouldn't be felt until 90 degrees in this direction. And what would that cause you to do? Have sort of a left turning kind of tendency where you got to keep things straight and level by applying a little bit of right rudder. So that's what that's telling you. And when you really, really feel this, is if you fly and swinging and banging them tail draggers and them tail wheels. And there's a reason for that. Just think about if you've ever been in the tail wheel, you got that thing sitting like this here when it's on the ground. Boom, you lay back in that thing, lean back, hey, lean back. And then one of the purposes that you're doing right before takeoff, as you're giving it the full power, you, that, old, that old school stick and rudder, baby, you're bringing that thing forward, pushing that tail off the ground. That's exactly what you're doing. You're putting force on the propeller in that kind of forward motion and it's going to be felt 90 degrees in the direction and that's going to give you that left turning tendency and if you ever fly that tail wheel you know you got to give it a lot of rudder to keep it straight because now you've got all four of those things working against you to kind of make it want to bank to the left and you really got to be on that rudder and on top of those rudder pedals dancing on those things like you're doing the merengue so you can keep it straight that's gyroscopic perception in a nutshell these are the main four reasons why your plane gonna have a tendency to lean back a to the left lean back a to the left and it's gonna be so cool like that that you got to give it that right rudder and more right rudder and more right rudder to make sure you keep it nice and coordinated and straight whether it's down the runway or it's in the sky at all times just being aware of this can help you tremendously it makes you want to stay on those rudder pedals this is why it's imperative to be on them so you can stay coordinated at all times if you come in for your landings or even you just floating that thing through the sky, always have your feet on those rudder pedals ready to respond and react to whatever the aircraft is giving you at the time. This is the left turning tendencies that you need to be aware of. All four of them things, four by four, baby. No Wendy's. Don't forget to like this video, comment and subscribe to this channel, share this video. I am Donovan Batiste. This is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free information for everything that you need to know to become a pilot, to stay current, to stay proficient, and to just have a community of fun to talk it up and chop it up about them things, them planes, baby. Hey, one time, let go.